Hello and welcome to Build Guys. Today we've got a healing mesmer build for you. This is a fantastic build for holding down a point. It has access to seven individual heals. Four of them instant casting, so it can be used through stuns and blocks and that kind of thing. Two of them are going to heal your teammates as well, and then one of them is very, very powerful, which is of course just your normal standard heal. First up, let's take a look at the weapon sets. So we've got the staff in our first weapon set. This is a fairly standard weapon choice for a bunker build. You basically got access to this Chaos Arm and the Chaos Storm, and the Chaos Storm triggering phase retreat inside of it will give you even more chaos armor chaos armor is great it's going to give you protection regen and swiftness while confusing and blinding and crippling your opponents it's just fairly standard one to try and keep up a little bit the staff's not the key weapon here though the scepter and the sword are more important so this is actually going to give you access to two individual blocks which are going to completely mitigate an incoming attack from the enemy really really useful they're also going to summon up a clone when that happens you got a Phantasm there on the number 5, and Confusing Images on the number 3 as well. Not particularly important, I'm not a big fan of Confusion, as many people will know, but this is actually going to give you a little bit of use for it, because you are going to be taking up quite, soaking up quite a bit of damage, so it's going to give you a little bit more access to that, and a bit more use out of it. For the uh, normal here, we've gone with Ether Feast, so this is going to give us more healing for the more illusions we have out. Not particularly useful, really, but there's not really any one you, other one you can go with. Uh, the Mantra of Recovery is not quite consistent enough, because you're going to have to cast it pre-combat, and the way the Mantras are working in this build, you don't really want to be casting them pre-combat, you want to be casting them in combat, but we'll get into that later when we talk about the traits. Um, and then Mirror as well isn't just not really going to give us um, quite enough healing. You could go with Mirror just for the reflection duration, one second, it could help here and there, but the heal is is quite less than the um, Ether Feast and you do want to have that big boost because you've got the high toughness so that big boost of healing is going to make a pretty big difference and there's only a 5 second cooldown difference in them as well so next up we've got Decoy there on our very first utility skill Decoy is going to grant us stealth, break stun and summon up an illusion to basically pretend it's us while we're in stealth the reason we've taken this is because of our next two abilities which are the Mantras we basically traded so the Mantras are going to give us actually quite a substantial heal to us and our teammates when we cast them so that means when you actually initially set them up, mantras basically you set them up and then you can trigger them quickly on demand later in the combat. But uh, the way these work, the heal will actually only trigger when you first set it up, but it does have quite a long cast time of it, with three and a quarter seconds on both of them. Um, but if you use decoy and then trigger one, you're going to have a better chance of getting it off without getting interrupted, giving yourself and your teammates a better heal. It's basically just a way to get another fairly solid and secure heal, much like the FFV, so you've got two very safe and secure heals there. We've gone with the two matches just because you are going to be able to get them off in combat against anyone who isn't heavy in CC, so it's not going to be too much of a problem. Three and a quarter seconds is a very long time in combat, but the heal it gives you affects your teammates as well and it's pretty damn substantial it's in the region of 3.1k something like that it can go up and down depending on quite how you build it but it's somewhere in the region that's you and your teammates and that's pretty damn important uh, the actual mantras we have gone with are the Mantra of Resolve and the Mantra of Pain. Mantra of Pain is a must have because the cooldown on it is only a second so you can literally use it, trigger off the two um, damaging abilities to do a little bit of damage to your energy, enemy and then be able to recast it again when you need it. So you've got to have that one. Um, the uh, Mantra of Resolve is mainly just to give us some conditional removal because we haven't got a great deal and that's going to help out there. For the elite skill, Time Warp is actually brilliant. I love this ability. It's fantastic for supporting your teammates in general. Absolutely great. You could also go with Moa Morph if you felt it was going to be more uh, useful to you. But the cooldown difference isn't really that much. It's 30 seconds. And on these sort of really long, to over 2 minute cooldowns, that's not really a big issue. These are actually both over 3 minutes long. So... It's 30 seconds in the grand scheme isn't really going to be much of a problem and I just feel that in general time watch is so much more useful. 10 seconds of quickness to you and all your teammates in the area. This is enough to easily just turn a fight around and instantly win. It's also great for getting finishes and revives and stuff like that. If you are in a really clutch moment you can just trigger it and get it there and then. Uh, I'm also going to talk about our Shatters, so Shattering is quite important in this build, I'll go into why in a moment when we get into the traits, but we do have the Mind Rack, Cry of Frustration, Diversion and Distortion, um, these are all instant cards and these are actually going to work as heals, so these are our first four instant cast heals, they're not going to give us a huge amount, but they are going to give us a substantial amount of healing when you couple in the amount of toughness we've got, so we've got four there, then we've got the Ether Feast giving us our big, big heal on a 20 second cooldown, and then we've also got the two Mantras, with one on a 20 second cooldown and one on a 1 second cooldown cooldown to really be able to burn those out quickly. Uh, so it's going to give us a huge amount of healing power there. You can see seven individual heals, two of them supporting our teammates, one of them giving a massive boost and four of them instant cast. And that makes such a massive difference because you can just splash away through them all and get a nice big boost in the healing and get back in the fight very, very quickly. Uh, so next up we're just going to take a quick look at our armor and stuff. 
So for the runes on our armor, we've gone superior runes of mercy. This is going to give us quite a bit of toughness and then also make our revives more effective. We're going to take less damage when we're reviving, revive them with 20% more HP and revive them 10% faster. This can really be whatever you want. I actually love the um, rune of mercy. I think it's absolutely brilliant for supporting your teammates in combat. If you're going to be working on the central node with someone else, it's pretty much a must have. But if you're going to be bunkering down on your own individual node, you could go somewhere else for this because obviously the reviving allies isn't going to help quite as much. So you could go a different way, but do try to focus on toughness or vitality, preferably toughness though, because you really want to get that up as high as possible. And the HP on this is fairly reasonable at 8k with the amount of toughness we actually have in the end. Um, for the sigils and our weapons, for the scepter and the uh, sword, we've both got one, the exact same one. This is the superior sigil of life. So stacking sigils is quite unusual, but this is an interesting way to do it. If you actually have two of these um, sigils, they will actually give you a hundred... Um, healing power each time you kill a foe up to 250 so you're going to get 100 for the first kill 100 for the second kill and then 50 for the third kill and then it's going to hold you at 250 until you go down or uh, get defeated so that's quite a massive boost and it's going to basically get you up there faster the reason we've gone with two is because we want to get that healing up as quick as possible and if you're bunkering build you might not be getting too many kills so you really got to make the ones you do get count so it's going to get us up there really really quickly giving us a massive amount of healing we can already see over here just as standard we got 1220 23. That's going to get us up to near 1,500 when we've got all that stacked up as well. And that is a massive, massive amount of healing power. Um, in our staff, we've got a superior sigil of leeching. You could go a different way with this, perhaps going with a sigil of battle if you wanted to get a bit of might in there as well to give yourself a little bit more damage. But the leeching does work well. It's going to give you that small amount of heal when you first swap into the scepter. So for the amulet, we've gone with a fairly obvious choice for a healing and toughness build, the Cleric's Amulet. This is going to give us power, toughness and healing power, healing power being the main stat. So as far as our traits go, we've gone with 10 points in dueling, giving us critical infusion and uh, protective mantras. Protective mantras is the important one here. Increasing our armor while we cast mantras, it's going to increase it by 250, making us hard to kill while we're healing ourselves. It's got to be useful, right? 30 points in inspiration giving us a lot of vitality and a lot of healing as well as vengeful images granting retaliation to phantasms. Uh, phantasmal healing, phantasm is going to give us regeneration, it's got to be useful and phantasms deal 15% more damage. This sounds like a lot but it's actually not just because of our lack of power in general. We're really only able to kill glass cannons with this build, anything else is going to be pretty damn hard to finish off um, but obviously we are to just soak up damage so much it does make up for that quite substantially but um, yeah this is going to make it a little bit easier to kill those squishies but not massively. Shadowing Illusions grants vigor to nearby allies giving us more dodges, more damage mitigation, brilliant. Uh, heal allies when you cast a mantra, so obviously this is a must have, it's going to give you the healing on both of the uh, castings of these mantras, but do remember like I said it only triggers on the actual channeling of the setup of the mantra, not when you're triggering the ones once it's actually set up. Um, next up we've got the uh, heal a small amount when you shatter illusions, so that's going to make all these more useful, whenever you shatter your illusions you're going to get uh, a little bit of healing. Next up, 30 points on illusions. Condition damage isn't really all that useful. I mean, we've got a staff, so it's going to help a little bit. But uh, here you're going to get the reduced recharge on all of your shatters, which is definitely going to be useful. Uh, illusion summoning skills recharge 20% faster. All shatter skills inflict confusion. And shattering illusions grants you one stack of might per illusion. Um, this is sounds really really good but I'm actually going to go into why they're all not so useful <laughs> in a moment because of the actual uh, main one we've taken here in our Grandmaster line but I'll have to show you the other ones first but um this sounds like you need to have illusions up all the time of course if you want to shatter you need to have illusions up all the time you actually don't um, we've actually taken this one here which is going to give us shattering illusions creates a shatter effect on you as well you don't actually now need any illusions to trigger off these shatters, which means you don't need any illusions up to trigger off your heals. So you're completely unreliant on anything. You've got four instant cast heals at any time. You don't have to have illusions up. There are no prerequisites at all for that. That makes this such a powerful build, being able to just spam all four of those off instantly, one after the other, without worrying about casting off any more um, illusions. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, recharge all your shatters to 50% HP, so again, that's a very important trait. Once you're down to 50% HP, you're obviously being focused, you're instantly going to recharge all those, and you can just smash them all out again and get back up on your feet. Bear in mind that smashing them all out again is going to give you distortion as well. I mean, if you start off with distortion, that's going to give you a good amount. If you've got a couple of illusions up, you can get three seconds, four seconds of distortion. Really, really useful. Um, but yeah, that's going to give us that, which is pretty damn important, really, in this build in general. And then Phantasms recharge 20% faster. This isn't really a must-have. I mean, you could go 
somewhere else with this, but none of them are particularly useful at this point in the um, line. We haven't really got anything that we can really um, push ourselves with in this build with that. The uh, increase in the uh, cooldown of the Phantasms is useful just simply because it gives us a little bit more damage. We can get the Phantasmal Swordsman out more often, and we can get the uh, Phantasmal Warlock out more often. It's helpful, but not a must-have. you think there's something better you can go with in that line, go with it, but you have to go the 30 points in because that Illusionary Persona is so, so powerful. The Shattering Effect is just going to give you access to all those heals whenever you want them. So this first clip's on the Legacy of the Faux Fire, and we're heading down towards the quarry to engage against this warrior. Fairly confidently going in, we know we can tank him for a while so we can get on point as fast as possible. Uh, we see he's got a sword and a shield, so you can judge he's going to have some conditions, and he switched into his other weapon set, Dual Maces, so we know he's got some CC as well. Um, so the information this has given us, we know we need to get our condition removal up, so we've actually triggered off our mantra early without getting any heal really from it, but that's going to give us the condition removal we might need if he does come in with his burst against us, so we can quickly strip those conditions away, because obviously they are immune to toughness, so uh, having condition removal is quite important in this build. Our teammate came in as well, we've also got an elementalist in here as well, so currently I believe it's 3v2, uh, two elementalists for the other team, and then uh, two mesmers and the engineer for my own team here. The start of this encounter isn't really all that interesting, I mean it's not much going on, um, obviously there's a lot of players here, but it's nothing really to point out that's particularly special, it's just a general encounter, but it does get better, and you're going to see some pretty interesting combat later on. Uh, our teammate going down there in the background, he's going to get finished off. There's no real way we can do much with this build. We haven't got any CC to really stop them from doing anything. We do have, of course, a daze on one of our shatters, but that's a quite difficult one to really trigger off and get a good timing on. So our team has gone down, we've got Elements has gone down for their team as well. We're getting focused hard while trying to finish him off though. They're trying to revive him. We're going to manage to get this finisher off just in time I believe. There we go, it triggers and hits him there. Uh, really, really close though, we could have taken some serious damage. We had to trigger off all our shatters to keep our HP up to a reasonable level. At the moment we're 2v2, two Mesmers versus an Elementalist and one of the Warriors. So we're not being focused, which is a problem. We want to be really the target of their aggression um, and just try and distract them as that much as possible. So there we go. We've got this... Um uh, sorry, the uh, elements is trying to focus on us now. Try to go for his stomp there as well on his um, number four skill there on the earth uh, achievement, which is fairly effective actually as a knockdown and stuff. Uh, but uh, we managed to avoid it, and you can see in the background there our teammate is about to go down as well. Um, all this is basically going to lead us into a 2v1 now against ourselves, and we're going to be able to show you how this build tanks against uh, multiple opponents. So here we go, we've got a few illusions up at the moment, which is of course causing some confusion to the warrior who's just come back into the fray. They're not sure quite which one is us. And that's obviously a key part of the Mesmer as well, is you've got this sort of drop target system of being a sum up, sum up illusions and cause them problems. So there you go, you sort of spamming off all of our um, shatter skills, giving ourselves a nice bit of boost of healing. They were chaining CCs on us, it could have been a big problem, but we managed to get that off. Dodging it out the way of the Earthquake ability there, which would have done some pretty serious, or Earth Shatter or whatever the ability is, it's the number 5 on the uh, Elementalist dagger in Earth Achievement. Uh, obviously they're both running fairly bleedy specs, we were able to strip those conditions off us fairly effectively. There we go, triggering our Mantra again, getting ourselves some more healing. Our um, Shatters are starting to come off cooldown as well, our main heals off cooldown. It's got access to so much burst healing this build. It's not just small heals ticking over like you get in the Healing Bomb Engineer or the um, Evasion sort of build for the uh, um, Thief where you're dodging and healing yourself on attacks, where you get small heals, this gives you big, big heals every single time. Big boosts of healing, especially when you're shattering all those illusions in tandem. So we, our teammates come back in to support us now as well, and you, we've held all those two opponents there, 2v1, for a good minute or so, um, and we just haven't really gone below 50% HP throughout this entire encounter. We haven't been the focus as much as we would like to be. Uh, you could easily take more damage and take more people focusing on you, but these two players have realised that we're obviously a, quite a tanky build and they can't kill us even with two of them on us, so they're trying to focus on our teammate. Trying to keep ourselves up with a little bit of um, Chaos Armor as well. Chaos Armor is quite helpful, just giving you that protection. Uh, that's obviously really helpful. Trying to focus here on the Elementals, pushing them back, pushing them away. Uh, trying to get some Confusion up on them there, which is going to do a little bit of damage. Again, I'm not a massive fan of Confusion. It's reasonably useful. I can see why some people do like to back it. I just don't think it's quite powerful enough. The Elementalist goes down here, and we come in to try and go for our finisher. And that is another use of Decoy you saw there as well. Unfortunately, he managed to use um, his Misform to escape. You can use Decoy to get yourself a more secure finisher. Um, Warrior there knocking us down, but we're going to now pick up these two kills, and this is mainly down to us just controlling this node, uh, that's the Warrior Vengeance there, he hasn't actually fully rallied, but 
we controlled this node so effectively um, throughout the encounter in general um, and against the 2v1 which m many of our builds wouldn't be able to handle that much pressure coming on two condition based builds against a build that's based on toughness not vitality that's really hard difficult to be with but we've got so much healing we can just handle that keep ourselves alive and keep going on in the combat so this clip's some 1v1 combat against a warrior. This is the same warrior from the clip before. We're coming in open up with Time Warp there. That's a complete waste. I've got to just point that out right now. Time Warp at the beginning of this fight was useless. That was a complete and utter waste of that ability. It could have been much better used later on. But uh, this clip I've mainly chosen just because it shows you how you would play if you were bunkering down on a node, if you were defending sort of your near side node or something like that. Um, obviously, if you were defending the near side node, you would already have control of it, and you'll notice that we're not really getting pressure too hard out of the node. You would have problems if you're fighting against someone who does have a lot of knockbacks, because of course they can physically force you off the node, and that can cause you issues. You have got the stun break, however, on decoy, and that can get you back in the fray okay, and you can try to avoid the um, damage by using distortion shatter as well. However, um, if you're fighting someone who's just using pure power, like this player is trying to force us out, he's trying to use a stun there which he managed to avoid, avoiding his throw bowlers as well. Um, anyone who's doing that sort of play and they're just trying to pressure you out while actually using physical damage, you're going to be able to deal with pretty effectively. Using his burst ability there on a sword, he sacks up quite a bit of uh, bleeding on us. We're able to quickly deal with it though, I mean he didn't really ditch out enough to cause us any serious problems. We get off one of our mantras, get off a couple of our shatters and we're back in the fray, we're back up with a nice high amount of HP. Getting some blindness off of him as well. We've got other effects, of course, when you are shattering those abilities. You are getting the bonus effects of the shatter itself. Because, obviously, you're actually shattering yourself. Um, and the effects are working on everyone around you. I mean, we've got three stacks there of confusion on him. Done a little bit of damage. So, he's got us down to a fairly low amount of HP now. Our mantra's off, cooldown, though, and our heal. He did a good job of CCing and interrupting our abilities really, really well. But now his stuff's on cooldown. And we could just get our mantras back off and get ourselves back up. We've got just enough HP and just enough toughness to deal with that sort of pressure. Uh, obviously... It does become an issue if you're facing against someone who's got a large amount of CC, perhaps like um, a Captain Hammer Warrior build or something like that. If you're fighting someone who's using something like that that can chain CC and stun lock very effectively and someone else who's out to dish out some very high damage, then that's going to be the biggest weakness of this build. But then it's requiring them to send two players, two specific builds, to come and get you to get you off your node, meaning they've got less control of the rest of the map, meaning your teammates can do better out on the rest of the map. I mean, there's no way of them really defending the node once you actually get back to it. You haven't really got any knockbacks, which is one of the problems with this build for recapturing nodes, but obviously if you have a teammate come and support, you can quickly wipe the player off the node, and you can get back control of it. So uh, this clip, I mean, it's a 1v1, so it's not particularly um, highly active or anything like that. It's more about staying calm and just slowly whittling the player down. He's not able to kill us, so we're not able to kill him, and that's pretty much what this fight's all about. Um, this build has so much healing. It's got the seven individual heals, so, so much. I mean, uh, it's so easy to trigger. It's just not going to... There's so few builds that can really cause you any problems. The one thing you are going to have to struggle against is occasionally very, very high DPS thieves very very high dps elementalist if someone's coming in with some serious serious glass cannon firepower they will be able to hurt you the, but that's true of any build i mean there's no builds that are really able to count that sort of thing and perhaps some certain guardian builds are able to deal with it and this is quite an interesting moment there as well that player actually stopped playing and fighting for a moment i do believe he was typing in chat for help because uh, his teammate comes across to help him now it's actually only 2v1 in this game those two players against myself um but yeah you can see he seemed to stop and drop write something in chat because his teammate came running over then and his teammate stopped a moment ago to type something back in chat as they tried to focus down um, so now they do have control of the node. I mean, we're not going to win this encounter now. The Elements has got some pretty serious firepower. But I mean, we held off for an entire cooldown there of our time warp. I mean, we just triggered it again. That's 210 seconds, I believe, or something along those lines. That's a really long time to last in just a 1v1 and not really have any threat of us really dying. We had one moment where we came close, and even then we still had it fairly safe. Uh, obviously, this 2v2, they are now going to bring us down. We go into the down state, but... That was just a good example of bunkering down on a node, and of course, in a normal game, you would just call one of your teammates over to come and help you, and then you'll get this node back nice and quickly, and start the whole thing all over again. So this clip here is going to show you really what this build is all about. We're coming up towards the central node. This is um, three players on there for the red team. Obviously, they're playing some pretty high damage builds. We've got a thief there, we can see, and a uh, warrior as well. They had all their focus on us. They didn't see our own thief coming up behind him and nearly finishing that warrior off. He came so, so close. He nearly had him. Um, their thief switched over to try and focus on 
R1, but we're going to try and keep some distraction up. That's what this build's all about. You want to be distracting the enemy. Our teammate goes down here. We come in laying down Time Warp, hoping to get a quick revive off. Unfortunately, he actually teleports out of it. He managed to mitigate the uh, incoming finishes, though, and giving us a chance to finish off their warrior, giving him an instant revival. And you just saw a quick swap in this match. We came onto that node, 3v1. We should have got spiked down a bit in that downstate in seconds. No, they had all their focus on us. They tried to get us. We were able to take that damage because of the amount of toughness we have, recover quickly because of the number of heals we have, and give our teammates a chance to get in there and dish out some huge damage. Just like that, once again, that um, Thief came out of stealth, focused on us, trying to go for a finisher. Our own Thief nukes him down and finishes him off. That's what this build is all about if you're working with your teammates. You're going to be heeding them with your mantras, giving them some support from that. But your main goal is just to be a focus for the enemy. Get them hitting at you, focusing on you so your teammates can just tear them apart from behind. Absolutely brilliant example there to show you what it's all about. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave us some feedback on what you thought of the episode below. Uh, and don't forget as well, we're going to be back on Wednesday with our PvP guide to the Trebuchet. And then on Friday, we're going to have an advanced guide to the Trebuchet where we're going to delve quite in depth into some of the tactics involved in using it. For now though, I'll see you all soon.